one of the retired military officers said this to me that I thought was pretty telling. He said, I worry when you take a generation that grew up playing Grand Theft Auto and put them into this space where they're controlling machines with the very same video controllers, what are the implications of that? And there's another scene in the book where uh, Air Force um, Predator Squadron Commander talked about the challenges of how his people under his command, you know, they're, they're engaged in war, but they're delinked, and that sometimes it can get, in his words, pretty bloody-minded, and that you have people saying, you know, just like sitting around playing video games, you know, take that one, hit that one, and even, you know, cheers would happen when you take out a site, and so you constantly have to remind people that, you know, look, this is a mission, this is lives are at stake, and it's very difficult because you have a balancing act going on there. Um, one of the things that's fascinating is that the military has tried to free ride off of the video game culture. There's video games that are used for recruitment. Uh, America's Army is a video game that's incredibly popular, and it was basically started up by the U.S. military to help persuade people to join. But then also, the very controllers themselves are video game controllers. They're just like the ones that you would have with an Xbox or a PlayStation. And the reason the military does this is twofold. One, the companies behind them, you know, the Sonys and Microsofts of the world, have spent millions of dollars figuring out the exact right way for the little uh, device to sit in your hand, where should you position your fingers, etc. So why not take advantage of that research? But the other part of it is that you have a generation coming in that's already been trained in their use, so they learn very quickly. And the result is that you're seeing younger soldiers proved to be more talented at certain roles than much more experienced soldiers. Uh, there's one uh, soldier that I interviewed was a 19-year-old drone pilot. He was a high school um, dropout, army enlisted man, but he turned out to be so good at it that he became actually one of the best drone pilots in the entire force, served in Iraq, and then they brought him back to become an instructor at the training academy. Not an officer, not a college graduate, but an instructor. And so you tell that story, you go, wow, this is really reshaping the demographics of war. But then you say that story to an um, Air Force audience, and they get really freaked out. You know, an F-15 pilot says, you know, I spent years and years of training, college education, I'm an officer, and you're telling me that this 19-year-old is not only doing more in war today, but may even be more talented because of his video game skills? That's an interesting trend.